Hey guys, it's Chris from Mega Visions Magazine and Sega Nerds, and this is going to be my first video blog uh, for my, I guess my journey in collecting every officially released uh, North American Dreamcast game in under a year. Uh, I wrote uh, a post about it on Sega Nerds earlier in the week, and uh, I, I, at the time, I didn't think I was going to do video. I thought it was just going going to be print only. Um, I would just write uh, basically a weekly um, journal entry. But after I started talking to some people on Twitter, uh, it seemed like a lot of people were more interested in, in video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a weekly video uh, blog, I guess we're going to call it that, uh, to go along with the, the print version. So that's going to be attached to every article that I write or journal entry that I write on Sega Nerds, but if you're more interested in just watching the videos, uh, that'll be here as well. Uh, I'm going to create a, a playlist on the Sega Nerds YouTube account, so you'll be able to follow it that way, and I, I hope that will uh, maybe increase some uh, potential interest in the series. Um, but anyway, uh, this is our first one, like I said, um, it's St. Patrick's Day today, so I'm wearing my green um, Sega Channel style Megavision shirt, uh, which you can uh, get off our T Public store. Um, I'll put the link to that if uh, if you're interested in it. So I guess the reason why I started this whole challenge is because uh, I've been collecting off and on for about five or six years now, uh, and I've collected most of the uh, most of the, the systems that I, I really want. There's still a few out there that I need, but I mean I have. Every every model Genesis, I have the you know the 32x. I have both CD uh, attachments. I have a European Mega Drive, um, all those things. Uh, and so I feel like for the most part, I have most of the systems that I want to get. There's still a few other variants and other things like that 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 I'll probably pick up at some point in time. But um, throughout that whole time, is I've I've never really dedicated myself to collect games for only one system. I've mainly just picked up games as I went along, or I would find myself that I'm really interested this month in getting 3DO stuff. So I'd buy a bunch of 3DO games, um, and then I would turn my focus to something else. So what ended up happening is I have a bunch of games, but not necessarily a lot of games for any one platform. And that's fine. But I wanted to challenge myself to, to really focus in on one system in particular. And my favorite Sega system ever is the Dreamcast. It's the system that, that really kind of got me back into Sega again um, after you know years of kind of drifting away um, with the Sega CD and the Saturn and, and those type of things. You know, I, I've had the Saturn and I played it quite a bit, but... Um, the Dreamcast really brought me back uh, really big. So I, I just love the Dreamcast. I had so much fun with it. And so I thought this would be a fun thing to do uh, to try to start this challenge. And what I want to do is I, I don't want to just buy games on online, like on eBay or anything like that. I want to actually get out and go to brick and mortar stores, go to flea markets, visit uh, yard sales, things like that. Uh, there are so many retro game stores in the Northeast uh, that I've never even been before. So part of this also is a way to get me back into those stores and, and hunting video games again and finding interesting stories along the way. Uh, I think it, it wouldn't make for a very compelling series if all I did the entire time was just bought games off eBay and you know showed you <laughs> showed you new games. Um, so I'm going to try to stay away from that uh, as much as possible. Uh, I think it's going to be impossible to completely do it because there's going to be certain games that uh, if I really want to get this done in, in under a year, I'm going to have to go online and buy, and buy them. Uh, I, I, I understand that. Um, so, um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's basically where we're at. Uh, so yesterday, I went on my first official, uh, I guess, hunt for after starting this uh this this challenge the dreamcast collection challenge and uh, i was really surprised uh, by what i was able to get uh, i went to a place called j street v 
video games in Cherry Hill, New Jersey. And I've been there a few times before, and I've never really paid much attention to their Dreamcast collection. Uh, I've mainly went there looking for, for Genesis stuff, 32X and 3DO, um, which they've had a decent supply of. But I was actually pretty impressed with their, uh, their selection of Dreamcast games. Uh, so I'm going to show you uh, those here in a minute. But before that, I did pick up two other games earlier in the week that I did buy off eBay. Um, but one of them... Uh, was because I wanted to get it uh, really quickly so I could try to play it online. Um, and that first one would be World Series Baseball 2K2. Now, I never really played this game a whole lot back in the day, but the reason why I wanted to pick it up is, like I said before, uh, it's just recently been brought back online uh, thanks to the uh, the efforts of uh, Shuoma. Uh, and you can find out more, uh, I think it's dreamcastlive.net, is where you can go to figure out how to get your Dreamcast back online again those guys do some really amazing stuff uh, I have no idea the the magic and the work that goes into uh, bringing Dreamcast games back online again in 2018 but it's it's absolutely amazing um, I bought a dream pie uh, it was super easy to set up um, so definitely check that out um, but World Series Baseball 2k2 I'm so excited that it's back online again uh, and I'm really looking forward to playing online against people on the Dreamcast uh, the second game I got online uh, on eBay uh, was Evolution 2. And this is a game that's weird because I could have sworn I had this in my collection already. Uh, I have no idea what happened to it. Um, but as I went along and started cataloging all my Dreamcast games uh, earlier in the week, I could not find it. And so uh, I, I like these games a lot. They're not the greatest Dreamcast games, especially when it comes to RPGs. Um, but there's still a certain charm to them, and I think it's a lot of it's the art style. Um, they're just kind of quirky uh, and whimsical little games. Uh, and I, I, I don't know if I completed the first Evolution, but I played it a lot. Uh, and Evolution Two was uh, was pretty fun too. So I, I picked that up, and uh, I'm I'm excited to get back at playing that again because the Dreamcast. When you talk about RPGs, everyone wants to look at Skies of Arcadia and Grandia 2, but there's really a lot more that the Dreamcast offers beyond that, uh, and Evolution 2 is, is definitely one of those games. Um, I also got Time Stalkers this week, I just realized that I also got Time Stalkers, and I think it might be downstairs. Um, as I was talking, I just realized, oh yeah, I got Time Stalkers as well, and that's a really fun Dreamcast RPG. That's probably one of my favorite Dreamcast RPGs, just for the amount of quirkiness um, that goes into that. And as I go along in this series, I'm going to try to start doing some, some like kind of like Let's Plays and things like that where I actually get to play some of the games and uh, offer some commentary about them. Um, and I think Time Stalkers will probably be one of the first games that I do that for. Um, but let's show you some of the games that I was able to pick up from J Street Games, and I'll, I'll talk about some of the prices and stuff as well. Um, so I got uh, Railroad Tycoon. Um, this was listed at $8.99. Uh, it's fully complete, um, as you can see. And uh, the disc is in a, some really good shape. I try to put these in order, uh, but it looks like they got mixed up a little bit uh, from, from least to, to greatest in price. Um, but it looks like now they're all, they're all out of order. Um, the next up is uh, Tomb Raider Chronicles uh, for $9.99. I was uh, I was really surprised like how many games that they had on the shelf that I actually really needed uh, to add to my collection. Uh, if you look on that initial post, I created a, a kind of a spreadsheet that shows all the games that I owned previously in my collection, which was about 45 or 46 um, when I started the challenge, and all the games that I'm going to need to get. And uh, that's what I used when I was at the store because I forgot to bring my, my Dreamcast checklist with me. I, I had hoped to do that. Um, but I just looked online on, on that article, and I was able to look through and just verify um, that I wasn't buying a game that I already owned. Uh, next up is Speed Devils. I uh, got for $7.99. Someone asked me on Twitter, uh, which you can follow my... I created a separate Twitter for, for this challenge. It's at uh, ChrisCollectsDC. Uh, so uh, if you want to follow along, um, give me a follow there. But someone asked me if this was the 
rare version of Speed Devils, and I assume that would be like the the new and improved uh, ones that came out. Uh, no, this is not it. Uh, to answer your question, this looks to be just the the normal the initial release of Speed Devils. Um, but I got that for uh, seven ninety nine. Uh, next up is uh, Hoyle Casino, which was a $7.99. I've never played this game back in the day, um, but it says it comes with blackjack, craps, poker, uh, roulette, slots, video poker, video slots, and pie gal poker, which I have no idea what that is. Never heard of that before. Um, but it says also there's over 350 Vegas-style game variations. Um, and it uh, supports one to two players. And it's jump pack compatible, so I, I don't know what that could be. Maybe when you're um, playing craps or something, it, it rumbles or something like that. So that'll be interesting to see. Next up is Real Fishing Wild. Got this for eleven ninety nine. This is a, uh, a game that was um, looks to be published uh, by Natsumi and developed by Victor, or it could be the other way around. But this is a, uh, a a fishing sim game. I never played it. I don't think I've ever even owned it, but uh, I'm a big fan of Sega Bass Fishing, so it'll be interesting to see um, some of the differences in this. And I, I want to say Tom from the Dreamcast Junkyard did a whole series uh, about a year or so ago, maybe it wasn't that long ago, where he looked at all the different Dreamcast uh, fishing games, even those that were exclusive to Japan. So if you're interested in, in learning more about you know real fishing and some of the other dreamcast fishing games go check that out over at the dreamcast junkyard um, next up one of the things i ended up buying is lots of sports games which you'll see here in a minute uh, because they're cheap i needed them for my collection and uh, it was just some of those easy things just to go ahead and kind of check off the list so i got nfl quarterback club 2000 and this is an interesting game for me because I do have some some fond memories about it. Because when I uh, when I so after I graduated high school, I graduated in 2000. So naturally, the Dreamcast had just released um, around that time. And soon after, I enlisted in the Air Force. And so maybe about a week after I uh, graduated high school, I left and went to the Air Force uh, to boot camp. And I ended up bringing my Dreamcast along with me for some reason. <laughs> Obviously, I wasn't able to play my Dreamcast, so they locked uh, everyone's like personal stuff up in, in, a, in a storage closet. So I didn't get to see my Dreamcast again until about six weeks later after I gra graduated basic training. And then I went to uh, my technical school where I learned uh, basically uh, basic journalism for the Air Force because I'm a, I, traditionally I've, I've been a, um, an Air Force journalist throughout my Air Force career. And I, there were, there was a, a bunch of other, you know, guys in the dorms that loved playing video games with me. So um, my kind of my dorm, dorm room became the Sega Dreamcast room. And we'd have all sorts of huge uh, tournaments like Soul Calibur was super, super uh, popular. Uh, and I ended up getting NFL Quarterback Club uh, at the BX there for, for pretty cheap. And we played it a lot. Uh, but it wasn't that great of a game. And I remember one of the things that really annoyed me is that uh, when you threw a pass uh, and you're, you, you selected the receiver to catch it, you actually had to press like a button to move the receiver's hands to catch the ball. And it was so hard to do. It just it was so like unnatural to do that in a video game. Uh, and it wasn't a very popular game, needless to say. Uh, but for only $1.99, uh, that's that's cool. Um, I'm glad to have that in my collection. I ended up buying the web browser 2.0. It was five bucks. Um, I wanted just to get it because I I had a lot of you know fun memories of browsing the web on the Dreamcast back in the day. I remember going and checking my email, sending email, um, you know, trying to look at pixelated porn on it. It was. It was pretty funny, um, but it also has Sega Swirl on this too, which I didn't have before. Uh, I picked up NCAA 2K2 College Football for $199. Uh, this is uh, it's pretty crazy because Drew Brees is on the cover of this game, and he is still playing football today. <laughs> uh, it's it's pretty amazing that he's had such a long career and he's been so successful. He he's one of the best quarterbacks. Um, for the New Orleans Saints. I got Striker Pro 
Soccer 2000 for $8.99. I'm not really sure why this one is is so expensive, um, but uh, yeah, it's I don't know a lot about it. I, I never played this back in the day, so this would be the first time that I own it. Uh, so maybe some of you out there can give me some some insight on it. I don't know if it's maybe more of a a uh, an uncommon game as it comes to some of the other sports games on the Dreamcast. Um, I, I, it probably wasn't put out in as high uh, a numbers as some of the 2K2 games for sure that were uh, developed by and published by um, Sega. Next up is Revolt on uh, the Dreamcast. Uh, I guess this also got ports to other platforms, um, but this is a, a neat game. Uh, and I was playing it last night with my son. It's like an RC racer. Uh, and the controls, it's, it's, it's really interesting because controls are super tight, just like they would be uh, in an actual RC car. Uh, and it, it really gives you that, that feel like you're in an RC uh, car and controlling it. It's, it's really neat. Um, lots of neat um, variety in the maps and, and things like that. There's up to like eight or nine different uh, RC cars you can choose from. That are that each have their own unique characteristics and, and things like that, and there's even uh, like weapons that you get and you can use just like in you know your standard kart racers, uh, which is pretty cool. So we're definitely going to keep playing more of Revolt because my son really liked that. Um, I got Sega Bass Fishing for 4.99. Played that a little bit yesterday. Uh, I need to get a, a the uh, the fishing controller um, to to play with it because it's just not the same without that. Um, I'll definitely do that. Um, yeah, I got Demolition Racer for eight ninety nine. We played that a little bit last night, and a uh, very simplistic game. And it says here that uh, it supports the light gun, so <laughs> I have to look more into that and see just what actual uh, implementation it uses for the uh, for the Dreamcast light gun. That's kind of interesting. I got Slave Zero for eight ninety nine. Uh, we also played this a little bit last night uh, in multiplayer mode. And I have to say, man, the default controls in this are not very good. Uh, it, it's basically uh, the camera is mapped to the analog stick, and then you have to, to move. It's You're pressing the face buttons. Uh, and it's just so unintuitive. I know a lot of other games use those uh, style of controls. I think some of the Rainbow Six games did that, um, maybe some other first-person shooters. But it's just very unintuitive, especially coming you know, back to these games years later where you're used to a, a, a twin stick control system. Um, but fortunately, I played around with the controls and there's an arcade setting that will actually map um, the movement to the analog stick and you you move the camera up and down and, and kind of left to right with the, uh, the face buttons. And it, it makes it feel a lot more natural. But what was weird is the, the map that we played was very, very small. Uh, it was only felt like a couple rooms and there was no music either and I don't know if that was just because of some of the limitations that the uh, the Dreamcast had they couldn't uh, put everything in there um, but that was kind of interesting I'll, I'll definitely go back and play it but uh, my son was not uh, very very uh, excited about Slave Zero unfortunately um, next up is Sydney 2000 uh, Olympic Games uh, I got this for what was it 399 which was a, a pretty decent deal. Uh, I don't remember ever playing this either. Uh, it, it wouldn't have been something back in the day that would have interested me because I'd never. I don't play any of the Olympic games um, today. Even the Mario and Sonic games. I think I may have played the first couple, and I don't care <laughs> about those games anymore. Uh, Hidden and Dangerous for nine ninety nine. Uh, I don't think I ever played this back in the day either. So this will be this will be fun. Uh, my oldest son loves. War games like Call of Duty, games like that. So this will be an interesting game that him and I can kind of get into and, and play a bit together. Uh, World Series Baseball 2K1 for $1.99. Uh, pretty good deal for that. Uh, I got NBA 2K1 for $1.99. And lastly, I got uh, Championship Surfer for $6.99. Never played this game either. Uh, but it says it supports the VGA box, uh, which is pretty cool. That's one thing that I definitely need to get to, um, look, especially when I'm looking into to doing some Let's Plays and things like that, because I don't really have a good setup right now uh, to to uh, to record Dreamcast games. 
Um, I, so I'm, I'm definitely going to have to figure out what's the best setup for that. So if you have any tips um, that you might be able to help me out with on, on what's the best setup uh, as far as uh, uh, recording Dreamcast games, I do have the Avermedia, uh, what is it, the Live Gamer, Gamer Portable. That's what I use to capture most of my footage. Um, but I don't think I have a composite uh, like dongle for it. So I'm going to have to figure out what I can do. I was thinking maybe going with um, one of the HDMI uh, products that the Behar uh, brothers do. Uh, but if you have a better option or, or some ideas, please let me know because I'll definitely check that out. But that was my first haul for my first week. And let me count. I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one games in my first week, uh, which I think is, is a very, very successful. It's a good start. Uh, and I think it put me uh, over the pace to, to get to my goal um, at the end of this uh, year. Um, so that's going to be good. I know all weeks aren't going to be this 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 good, um, but I'm going to need to at least be picking up a couple games a week uh, to stay on pace to to complete this uh, this challenge. So anyway, that's my first uh, video. Uh, please, uh, like I said before, uh, subscribe uh, to us on on uh, YouTube at Sega Nerds. Uh, go and check out the series on our website SegaNerds.com, and you can follow me as I continue. This kind of a quest to, to, you know, add new Dreamcast games to my collection. It's at Chris Collects DC. Uh, so that's going to do it for this one. Uh, I will be back again next Sunday and every other Sunday after that. There will be a new video and uh, journal entry that uh, publishes on YouTube and SegaNerds.com. All right, guys, thanks. Take it easy.